It's Ann. How are you? And let's see what I'm doing today. Now, Nona and I have been talking. Nona is my so-called life, 1977. Nifty lady. She's been doing lots and lots and lots of collabs with a lot of people. This is our first collab, and we tried to come up with something a little different. We were going, okay, we need an inspiration for something, because I don't collect a lot of palettes, so we can't do like, okay, let's take this and so palette and do a palette bingo. So, we put our little pointed heads together and came up with Farmer's Market, because the Farmer's Markets are starting to open up again. And each of us picked a fruit or vegetable and assigned it to the other one. <sighs> Miss Nona gave me rhubarb. <laughs> rhubarb is wonderful stuff. We actually grow it here in our garden. It technically, technically, is a vegetable grows kind of like celery, big long stalks. For the purposes of tariff and taxation, it's listed as a fruit because yonks ago, in the early days of the U.S., the tariff was lower on fruit than it was on vegetables. In this case, since people like to use rhubarb in things like pies, they said, yeah, it's a fruit. It's a fruit. So it got to be a little cheaper on the, on the taxes. Not a big deal. But it's wonderful stuff. It really, it don't try to eat it plain. Unless you really like sour, bitter stuff. Don't try to eat it plain. Rhubarb needs sugar. Rhubarb is very often also paired with another fruit to make pies and jams and that kind of stuff. Now with the rhubarb we grow, we make chutney and pickles using the sweet bread and butter type juice. Um, we make pie. We make crumb. Crumble is the world's best thing. You make pie filling and then take some quick oats and some brown sugar and a little flour and some butter and, and mix it, melt the butter, mix everything together, sprinkle it across the top and just throw the whole thing in the oven easiest stuff on the planet, and it's delicious. Now, when we're using rhubarb to do pies, if we're not mixing another fruit with it, we use, you know, just basic apple pie spice, and it's delicious. But it takes a lot of sugar to get it sweet enough for most people to want to eat. It's very, very tart. But it's so Yummy. It really is. The type that we grow in our garden is called Victoria. Now, the Victoria is not nearly as intensely red as what you see in a lot of the grocery stores. What you see in a lot of the grocery stores is either the crimson red or the Canadian red. And those are very red. It's red all the way through. Makes delightfully pretty pies. Victoria has a lot more green in it. I should at some point have some pictures up here. But still, the majority of the color that comes up with rhubarb and with the thought of rhubarb is red. It's almost a strawberry red somewhere between a strawberry and a red cherry. So, 
I now have to create an eye look based on rhubarb. If you want to know what I did to Miss Nona, you will have to go check on her. I will have her stuff linked below. In the meantime, I'm going to get started with my eye base, which is the Ruby Kiss, which has this funky little top that looks like that, that, that expensive potion stuff. It doesn't claim to be a dupe. However, for a basic peachy beige eye base, works really well. Cost me a couple of bucks a tube. I think the other one is, is um, Urban Decay, the expensive one. Don't know for sure. I don't normally buy Urban Decay stuff. It's a little out of my price range. But this works just fine. Yes, I'm using my fingers. First implements given to us. I know, it squicks some people out, but it's how I do. Looks like I got a little bit under as well just spread it out anyway. Now, it's just kind of a beigey base, nothing spectacular. I've got several different um, palettes I'm going to work with to try to get my reds. I've got the Beauty Glaze Trelizia. Mainly because I want to use that scarlet right there. It's also got a fairly nice green in it. Since I'm going to put a little bit of green in this. Because the leaves on the rhubarb, which are huge, are green. And then there's surge here in the aftershock. And then I've got... The Elf Mad for Mats Jewel Pop, because I want to use the green, again, for the leaves. And we will see where I end up with this. Now, with green and red, it may sound a little Christmassy, but I'm going to try and avoid the, the Christmas aesthetic. At least a little bit, you know? It just, it's not quite where I want to go. Let's start with that Scarlet from Strelizia. I'm just going to start tapping it in all around the center of the eye here. Oh, by the way, if you happen to hear a ring-a-ding-ding-ding, that's a timer for something that my husband's doing. So, pay no attention to the buzzering. It's nothing major to do with this.
Now, I don't really have a plan here. I'm just putting the colors where I feel like they belong. Now, luckily for me, I like red. Red is fun. I'm just kind of putting the shape on the eye with the red, and we will see where we end up. Oh, look at that. I have a ladybug on my Pokemon Go. Oh, well. You guys get to come first. Aren't you thrilled? I forgot to turn the Pokemon Go off before I turned the camera on. Oh, well. The ladybug will just have to sit there and be pitiful. I'm not going bug chasing right this minute. I think the scarlet is going to work out really well. For the rhubarb color. Because it is pretty close. Now we're getting ready probably this week to do some of the harvesting for our rhubarb. We usually manage to get two harvests out of it. You get one about now, at the beginning of summer, and then you get one just before you get into the fall. After you start getting closer into the fall, you really want to leave it alone. So that it's got, the plant itself has enough recovery time from harvest and can start settling in to keep itself going over the winter. Now once I do the First harvest, yes, there will be rhubarb crumble, and we will start making chutney. We've got pickles left from last fall, and Miss Nona better be ready because I'm sending her some of that bounty as part of this. She must get her shelves ready. Because it's a coming. Yep, that was the dinger that reminded my husband he has a project going. And he had to go run off and tend it. I'll put the surge out this way. Kind of darken up the edges just a little. I want to keep it lighter towards the interior.
I'm probably going to put something fairly pale in that inner corner. I don't really have a red and a glitter. So I'm not going to be able to just go, oh, look, glitter, slap, and rely on sparkly. I may have to look in my Elisa palette to see if I've got something that will work. I'm going to bring that into the crease just a little more, but I want this outer corner to carry a darker load on that red. Clean up the brush a little bit in between. Let me see what's in Elisa. See if I've got something in the red that'll work. I might have. This one might work. Now, Elisa does not have color names, which is a real pain in the tushy. But I've got this that I'm going to try doing on that inner corner to see if I can come up with something Do 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 Get my little spritzy bottle here. Give it a little spritz. Yeah, for you who haven't been here before, the spritzy bottle is a homemade setting spray. It's basically water, a little toner, and some glycerin. It's just vegetable glycerin. The vegetable glycerin I need maybe 20, 30 drops of. This is a $5 bottle. <clears throat> All right, I think this is working. It's just red enough and just sparkly enough. Gotta be careful where, which direction I spritz this stuff in. Got one dog in one place and a keyboard for the computer in another place. Yeah, my space is a little crowded. That's what happens when you film in a corner of your bedroom and you don't have a great working huge bedroom. working very nicely. It doesn't have to be really, really bright, but it does need it did need to stay in the same kind of color family so that I didn't have 611 different versions here. I just wanted a little bit of variation.
Now let's see what I can do about that final outer corner bit. Get me another brush so I don't have all that red mixing into the green because that turns into mud. Got a matte green in the Elisa. I'm going to start with just kind of pat it in kind of along the edges of the red, since that's kind of what you get with the Victoria. You get a little bit of the green still in the stalks as well as the deep green leaves. And where it meets the red in the stalks, there's just this kind of fade together. which I think is kind of pretty. Yes, this one's got a deeper V in the side. Let's remember, I don't have my glasses on. I don't currently own contacts. So I'm doing this <coughs> with limited vision. Very limited vision. And it also looks like this eye, the deeper red is brighter. So let's just keep going, see where we end up. Eyes are not symmetrical. We'll start there. But then again, neither are rhubarb stalks and leaves. This is just a slightly different green from the Strelizia palette. This one's called Blitz Emerald. And I'm going to kind of carry that one, which has got a little bit of a shimmer, down under the eye on the lower lid. Right on under, I've got a green eye pencil that I was looking at using on the lower waterline. So I'm thinking with this slightly shimmery right up under the lashes, that should actually work out pretty well. Now, I'm going to deepen this up just a little bit with one more green. And then I will be cleaning this up just a bit before I do my face. Do the rest of the face. Now, this is where I'm taking the Mad for Mats from Elf in the Jewel Pop to go after that dark green there. That's another matte, like it says, Mad for Mats. And I'm just gonna 
drop that at the edge in the corner. I will probably get a flat brush and take a little bit of this down into that lower lid as well. If you're wondering, since I've got little tiny eyes and they're very hooded, I use a lot of the e.l.f. round crease brushes because they're small enough to get into tight spots. I use two, actually two sizes of the crease brush. Because they've got a couple of different sizes. They've got a fine one and then a slightly thicker one. And this is that darker matte. I'm going to keep that tight right up here under the lash line. But I'm also going to take a bit of a fluffy brush and kind of smudge everything out just a little bit. I'm trying to stay away from mixing the red and the green. Again, we don't want mud. It's one of our biggest hassles when we're trying to do red and green during Christmas, is trying to prevent mud. Bad enough when the snow gets muddy. Just give it a little smoke. Little smoke. Alrighty, I'm going to run away and do a little cleanup and check to see if I have any fallout I need to deal with, and then do my face with the basic stuff. I'll come back and see what I we'll see what I have left to do when I get back, like put on some. A highlighter, maybe a lip, if I remember. Sometimes I get going with doing the base stuff and I forget what I'm doing and where I'm doing it and that I'm supposed to come back. Sorry. We'll call it senior moments. Anyway, that's what I've got so far. See you in a few minutes. Well, for you it'll be immediate, but hey, you know. See ya. Hi, everybody. I'm back. A little cleaned up. A little eyeliner. A little mascara. A little blush. A little bronzer. I took the pins out of my hair. It was washed fresh this morning. And... <clears throat> I put all my conditioners and everything in. And then I just walked away and let it dry. The problem was, is I didn't really think about it when I did that. So when I looked in the mirror a little while ago, I had stuff going this way and stuff going this way. And it was just everywhere, which is why I had the pins in it earlier. I put the pins in, give it a little spritz of hairspray so it settled down. 
yeah so now let's see what I'm going to do I've got a bunch of different highlighters and I'm not sure which one I really want to use this is the face candy unicorn palette kind of spiff and then I've also got the mermaid palette and then I've got a bunch of singles including an Ofra that came in an Ipsy bag which I thought was just wonderful but I'm thinking with the green at the edge of the eye look I'm going to use this it's called wonder and it's a kind of a green shade it's this one down here in the corner I don't know if you could see that or not the viewfinder for my camera is my computer monitor and it's over that way because if I have the computer monitor behind the camera then I get extra glow from the computer monitor onto my face which throws off everything including natural light and the ring light and all of that stuff so put the glow on just a little green to go with the theme Now, I'm actually filming this on a Wednesday. And Wednesday is when the farmer's market is open in my town. Unfortunately, payday is tomorrow. Which kind of puts a damper on things. one of those I got a couple of bucks but they're you know on cards and stuff and not all the merchants at the farmers market take cards and it's not quite enough to get the ATM to spit it out so have to try to put a little bit away from the paycheck so I can go next week and hit it little glow little glow Now, if you really want to bling, this will do it. I'm not sure if you can find this, these two palettes, out anywhere right now, though. Because I picked them up when Shop Hush went kablooey. They were on, like, Super Sale as Shop Hush went under. I think I've seen a few more of them still out floating around in a few places, but I'm not sure. I know, granted, it's not nice necessarily to show off stuff that isn't readily available anymore. However, I'm going to keep using stuff that I have. And pointing out that if I could find it this way, I'm pretty sure you can find it some other ways. Or at least something similar. I mean, the whole point of 
the way I do things is finding things that work that get that you can put together a similar color story to some of the high-end stuff without having to blow your whole household budget to do it and I will guarantee you that the likelihood of somebody else making a green highlighter or a blue highlighter or a particular shade of pink highlighter is pretty good when you look at all of the possibilities and the possible brands including some of the off-brand stuff. I mean, have a look at Clean Color, for pity's sake. Clean Color did some of my favorite lipsticks. No, I'm not sponsored. No, I'm not affiliated. They don't know who I am. I mean, I got a similar color from LA Colors. And it's got a really nifty topper to go with it. This has got a little bit of, of blue-purple reflect in the gloss. So you can play with it. I'm sticking with the red theme here. It's not, this is not bad. I got it at Dollar Store, okay? Got it at Dollar Tree. No big. No fur. Alright, that was rude, but still, no fur. And anybody who doesn't know what I'm referring to just needs to go check any other channel, pretty much, on YouTube. You will run into the stories of the furry lipsticks. There you go. What do you think? Rhubarb! Yummy stuff. Pretty yummy as a look, too. Definitely intense. But then so is rhubarb's flavor until you hit it with some sugar. <laughs> Ow! You need to go see Miss Nona. My so-called life, 1977. You really need to go see woman. See what I did to her. See what fruit or vegetable I picked. And see what she did with it. I think I'll go out for a little while. Go for a walk. I still got no bail money. Be good.